Hey guys, on today's episode, we're gonna be working on a 1991 250 turbo diesel wagon. It's a five speed, it has a full Recaro interior and it came from Portugal. Now, it's been sitting in a collection in South Carolina for almost 10 years and it's in the state at this point. It's completely filthy. We brought it up here. We're gonna get it cleaned and hopefully off to a new home. That and a whole lot more on this episode of Drive and Protect. Big thank you to my sponsor, Shopify, for not only helping me run AmmoNYC.com's website, but for giving us the opportunity to travel to find cars and stories like this one here. More on this later. A few weeks ago, I flew down to South Carolina to look at two Mercedes. The first one was a 300 CD, and the other was a very rare 250 turbo diesel wagon left in an estate for a few years. The late owner was the founder of Diamondback Radial Tires, and I got to tour the facility to see how custom white wall tires are manufactured. Click the link above to watch the 300 CD restoration and auction. Now, besides it smelling bad inside, yeah, it actually looks pretty That's good. That's why you're here. What do they say? I love it when a plan I, comes you know, together. Plan 18, comes together. right? I'm too sweaty for this. Anyhow, both cars were shipped up to the ammo studio, and I saved the wagon detail for last. I see some new rims in our future. Once inside the and under open. the lights, you can see just how dirty she really is. The paint is just covered in years of dust and grime, and glass had little paw prints running up onto the roof, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> Spider webs were absolutely everywhere, bird bombs, leaves, and the wheels look like they haven't been cleaned in forever. Inside, the same sort of thing. There's dirt, leaves, spider webs once again, which is kind of weird, and white mold everywhere mixed with dog hair. It's just kind of a big mess inside. Now the engine compartment is where I found the mouse poop and little white cocoon looking home things mixed in with the spider webs. If you know what they are, please leave a comment below. Step one is to set up the blocks and lift the wagon and remove the wheels. Next, I power washed the undercarriage and the wheel wells, which were once again, covered in mud, just like the 300 CD detail. Ooh. Afterwards, I foamed everything underneath with ammo foam, allowed it to sit for a few minutes, then went in and scrubbed the area with a dual density agitation, one of those scrub brushes, really, really helpful, as well as Titan 12 degreaser, and it removed tons of junk. Afterwards, I rinsed again before using compressed air in all the tight spots. Once all the undercarriage junk was clean, scrubbed, and then forced out with air, my floors were covered in mud, but the undercarriage was significantly cleaner. For the paint, I power washed the seams really well and then blew off most of the heavily soiled areas with just the pressure washer alone. Now in the engine compartment, there were a ton of leaves and spider webs and all kinds of stuff, which would have been just a headache if I used the pressure washer first. It would have been a soggy mess. So instead, I vacuumed up the leaves and the junk first. For the outside of the car, I have my wash bucket. Inside is one microfiber wash towel, a few squirts of Brute wheel soap for some extra strength, and a two-tier wheel brush for all the tight spots. Next, I focused on the wheels with ammo plum and several wheel brushes, and the before and after was just huge. For links to all the products and tools used in this and all of my videos, check out my website, AmmoNYC.com to support the channel, as well as new detailing innovation and products that come from working on these challenging and unique and sometimes disgusting cars weekly. So a big thank you to everyone who's been part of the Ammo family since 2011 when I started the company. Believe me, it doesn't go unnoticed. I'm very grateful. See you guys out there.
With the paint and the wheels now clean, I focused on the interior by first removing the cocoa mats, which I also found in that process, uh, a tow hitch that comes with the wagon. If you look underneath the rear bumper, there's actually an electrical unit, I guess, for your trailer, that kind of thing. I didn't know it, so that's really cool. As I'm learning more about the origins of this car, it actually turns out it was first purchased from what I'm being told in the Netherlands. And then I guess it lived in Spain for some time and then was shipped over to Florida and up to South Carolina where I was introduced to it by my friend Rusty. So this car is pretty special and certainly has a long history of where it's been around the world. Anyhow, inside I used ammo lather interior cleaner and an interior brush to lift the dirt and mold from the surface of the leather and the plastic. Afterwards, I then used the steamer to increase the cleaning power and speed to ensure everything was lifted from that surface. And then I just carried it away with a red microfiber towel. For the seams and crevices, once again, compressed air is your best friend, just like the outside of the car. I repeated the process on the rest of the interior, including using the mini woolly for the vents with a little bit of lather on the fibers to clean it between the fins, and then just blew basically everything out to kind of lift the mold and the dirt first before later on we're gonna go in and actually kill everything with Restore, but not till the very end. With the dirt and more importantly, the mold now removed from the surface, I then use compressed air to just blow out the carpets and the seams, everything underneath the seat and between the cushions before my round one, I call it a vacuuming, so it doesn't clog up my steam shampooer later on. Now, a lot of you have asked, how do you shoot so many videos and at the same time run an online company as an entrepreneur? And the answer is Shopify. I've been with them for about three years and it's changed the way that I do business. It's incredibly simple and it allows me the time to be able to shoot more YouTube videos. Now, back in 2011, when I started Ammo, I was using another e-commerce platform and working through their back end was just so cumbersome and time consuming that I could only shoot one video a month, that sort of thing. And three years ago, I said, I wanna shoot more videos. I want to do things that I love. And to be able to do that, I said, we have to switch our e-commerce platform and Shopify was the answer. This one in particular, this is a 190 SL. When I was on the shoot in the barn, I hadn't been moved for 15 years. I was running the company on my phone, which was insane to even think about back in 2011. Now you can do it with Shopify and this is the perfect example. So with that in mind, there is a free trial. Click the link down below. Without further ado, let's get back to the wagon. After vacuuming, I did notice a few spots of grease that needed Titan 12 degreaser, as well as a few other heavily unknown stains. When you're just unsure, sometimes I use a degreaser just to see what's going on there. And if it doesn't work, okay, fine. But I did fill up my compressed air diffuser with shag carpet cleaner and some water before priming the entire carpet with the cleaner and then focusing on those tough spots I just mentioned with a degreaser. Immediately afterwards, I used the steam vac to pull out all the stains and the embedded dirt from carrying the previous owner's dogs around in the back for all those years. Okay, at this point in the process, we've cleaned the interior and it looks great. Now we're gonna focus on the outside. As you can see, there's some paint fading, a little oxidation, as well as deep scratches, especially over here, which I think are caused from a dog, I'm not 100% sure, but they're relatively deep like nails. And when we did the 300 CD, it's the same owner as this car. Inside that other car, there was dog hair everywhere. So that's where I'm sort of making that comparison or correlation. Anyhow, on an older Mercedes, the paint tends to be a little bit harder and I did a few test spots and in fact, 
it is very hard. So we have this combination of hard paint as well as deep scratches. So what that means from a detailer is instead of normally using my wool pad, which I can pretty much do 99% of the cars, I'm gonna boost it up a little bit in aggressive nature and go with a uh, microfiber cutting pad. Now this is gonna cut through everything, but what it is gonna do is require me to do a second step polish. So this is gonna be a two step process, but when we're done, this thing is gonna look absolutely amazing. This is the hardest paint I've polished in five years. I mean, this is rock hard. After compounding, step two was to do the same process, but this time with polish to restore the finish after the heavy compounding session installed some light swirls. To protect my work, I applied Reflex Pro coating on a blue microfiber applicator pad. This paint turned to glass after the application because it was already so hard. I applied Frame Pro to the textured plastic in very desperate need of rejuvenation. As you can see on the trim, there's lots of scuffs and dings and stains that I really can't do anything about. So bringing back the depth and color is the next best option. My final protection step was to add Gelé Pro wheel coating to the beat up rims to prolong their life as much as possible. Now, this is gonna make cleaning easier in the future, but as I mentioned earlier, I would probably just have them stripped, sanded, and then re-powder coated if I was gonna buy the car myself. So as my last step on the inside, I used Ammo Restore to kill the germs, bacteria, and COVID-19 inside your car, your home, your gym, bathroom, and so on, without using bleach, which obviously will fade the color of your interior. I can't stress this enough, but don't be tempted to use those bleach wipes on the inside of your car. It's gonna cause damage. It's actually gonna cause it to fade slowly if it doesn't remove the color altogether. Restore, in fact, is an EPA regulated and approved for automotive interior, so you're not gonna have that fading. Aside from the doors and buttons and shifters, steering wheels, etc., I use Restore regularly on my kid's seat in the back to safely kill anything that may be carried home from school and left on the plastic, leather, and the fabric covers that I find usually have tons of germs in them over the years. It goes without saying, but please read the directions for all uses in your car, your home, or your office. It is a game-changing product for your car interior. With the interior now disinfected, I added mousse conditioner to the leather to bring back some of the suppleness it had lost from the South Carolina sun over the years. Keep in mind when you're working on perforated seats like this one here, be sure to spread the conditioner well into the applicator, meaning use your finger and kind of spread it all around. And there isn't any big high spots left on the pad before you apply it, so it doesn't sort of like clog those holes in the process. After about two minutes or so, you buff to a matte finish and the before and after is always really fun to see. Plus it smells like new car leather as well, which is always nice when you're working on a used car. 
Now, my very last two steps are always the glass and the tires. Now, for the glass, I had used a scrub pad first because the surface was just so bad and had years of embedded junk from just sitting outside or whatever. You can also use a clay bar as well. But for me, the scrub pad and the squeegee just work so great here. I stuck with it for all the glass. On a completely side note here, I never really realized until I watched this video back that I make the weirdest face when I'm cleaning glass. It's like I'm smiling in pain or something. I don't know. As a kid, I used to stick my tongue out while I was building Legos or, or whatever, but I guess I've moved to terrifying smiles when I'm cleaning glass. Anyhow, with the wheels now on and the tires all dressed up, all that was left was to pull her outside and go for a ride. Oof. This thing is too cool. say that this handles better than the the CD makes sense because it's newer but I could definitely rock this car you have so much room to put detailing stuff or whatever your normal stuff that you carry in your day but my day I carry detailed stuff it's really smooth and looking over the hood it looks nice this thing's been sitting for 10 12 years whatever it's been we just started it up it's running absolutely fantastic. It handles well, shifts well. It has wonderful torque. Obviously, it's a diesel, but there's something very special about a diesel. You can just turn that thing and it just seems to go every time. So uh, I'm a huge diesel fan, definitely a wagon fan. The interior is absolutely gorgeous. This thing shifts well. I think it's going to find a new home and the owner's going to be pretty pumped. Maybe we don't sell it. I don't know. If I come home with another car, I'm gonna probably have to sleep in it. Early the next morning, Tom Nisco came in to photograph the wagon before I posted her up on the mbmarket.com as I did with the 300 CD just a few weeks ago. $11,750 to Mad Wookie 308. Congratulations, I'm super excited. It's going off to a new home. I hope you love it as much as I do. As always guys, thanks for watching. See you next week. And before you go, here's a sneak peek of an upcoming episode. See you guys soon. Now listen to this downshift. Oh.